Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So continuing on with our review videos, today we'll be covering the concept of harful nasiba, and you should not get this confused with harful jar. So that's another type of harf that we studied that has an impact on an ism. Now similarly, there are a set of huruf known as the harful nasiba that will have an impact on the state of a verb. And verb states is something we haven't actually looked at before. Before we only looked at ism states, which were rafa, nasab, and jar. So now we're going to take a look at how verbs can go through different states. So when it comes to verb states, there are three. The first is rafa. For the present tense verb, when it has a lamma on the end, which is what we've seen so far in every scenario, that means it's in a state of rafa, and that is the default state. Then when it comes to a state of nasb, it will take a fatha when it's in the hua form and it's a present tense verb. And then finally, the third state, and perhaps the one that's a little bit strange to us, is the jazm state. And that's when it will take a sukun on the end, when it's in the hua form. And this doesn't apply to an ism. This is exclusively something that applies to the verb state of the present tense verb. Now, if you've noticed, all these cases are the present tense verb. And when it comes to the present tense, it is the only verb that can take on a state. The past tense verb does not. Actually, it is stateless. It is only the present tense that's going to go ahead and show us its state, and it will show it um, to us via its ending, similar to how an ism does. And when it's transferred into the command and prohibition, it will also take on the jasm state. Now, what does the nusp state look like when we take it through all the different conjugations? So, as we said before, the ending is going to go ahead and take a fatha rather than a dhamma. So it becomes yan sura. Now, when it's in the dual and plural state, or the dual and plural conjugation, the noon on the end will then be dropped. So then, rather than being yen surani, it becomes yen sura. And rather than it being yen suruna, it becomes yen suru. Right? Then we turn to ten sura, ten sura, and then yen surna. Now, the exception to the rule that was given before, where the noon is dropped when in the jasm state, is for the third person feminine plural and the second person feminine plural, right? So both female plurals, they will remain the exact same. Nothing is going to be altered to them at all. Rather, their state will only be known through context. So continuing on, it would be tensura, tensura, tensuru, tensuri. So before it used to be tensurina, but now the noon is dropped to show that it's in a state of nasp. Then it will be tensura, and then tensurna, this one will remain the exact same. Ensura, from ensuru, and then nensura, from nensuru, right? And that's essentially the nasp state of the fi'in mudari. Now, what exactly are the hurufun nasiba? There are five in total. The first is an masdariya. The second is len, which has the meaning of will not. The third is likai, which has the meaning of so that. The fourth is idhan, which has the meaning of in that case. And the fourth is hatta, which means until. Let's take a look at an masdariya. So let's say we have a regular present tense verb, such as yansuru, which means he helps or he is helping. Now, the masdar of it would be nasuran, which means help or to help. What an masdariya does, and it's there in the name, is that it will take the present tense verb that comes after it and it will give it its masdar meaning. So an yansura will be help or to help. It's pretty much equivalent to nasran. Then let's look at tadukhulu, which means he enters, or, or sorry, she enters, or she will enter, or she is entering. It becomes dakhlan, which just narrows it down simply to the conceptual meaning, which is enter or to enter, and that is equivalent to an tadukhula, which is enter or to enter. Right? The second, len. So len will have a twofold impact. The first is that it's going to lock the present tense verb into the future with the meaning of will. Then it's going to go ahead and negate it and add the meaning of not. So we'll have the meaning will not. So yen suru, which once again means he helps or he is helping, when combined with len will become he will not help. Right? So we have trapped in the future with will and then negated with not. He will not help. Then tadukhulu with len becomes she will not help. Right? The third is likai, which is 
which has the meaning of so that, and the verb, the present tense verb that it's impacting, will have its masdar meaning, but the pronoun will be preserved. And another thing to keep in mind is that likai can actually appear in three ways. It could be likai, or it could be kai, or it could be li. One of those three. So yansuru, he helps or he is helping, with luk likai, gives you the meaning of so that he helps. See, keep in mind the pronoun was preserved. It wasn't so that helps. Rather, the pronoun was kept, so it's so that he helps. And the same for the feminine, so tadkhulu, which means she enters or she, she is entering, with kai would be so that she enters. And then the last one here, yadaribu, which means he hits or he is hitting, with li would be li yadariba, which means so that he hits. Now this li here isn't to be confused, should not be confused with the li of harfujar, which we've seen before impact isms. If you see a li coming before a fi'al mudari, there is a really good chance, pretty much a high chance, that you're dealing with a harfun nasliba, especially if it's making the ending nasb. So you just want to pay attention to that and not get it confused with harfujar. So then we have idan, which has the meaning of in that case. And it will also add to the um, fi'al mudari, the future meaning of will. So idan yansuru becomes idan yansura, which is in that case, he will help. See, so we have in that case added from idan. Then the verb itself, its meaning is locked into the future, and that's how we get will. Then tadkhulu plus idan will be idan tadkhula. In that case, she will enter. Once again, we have in that case from idan. And then the verb gets locked into the future, and we'll have the meaning of will. So then our last one, which is hatta, which means until, and it will take the present tense verb and it will convert it into the masdar meaning. And once again, the pronoun will be preserved, just like how we saw in likai. So hatta yansuru becomes hatta yansura, which means until he helps. So from hatta we get until, and then the present tense verb is converted into its masdar meaning which is helps, and the pronoun is preserved. So, until he helps. And finally, hatta tadkhulu, which becomes hatta tadkhula, which is until she enters. Once again, until is from hatta, then enters is the masdar meaning of tadkhul, and then the pronoun is preserved, which is she. So, until she enters. And usually, um, hatta is utilized for um, responding to something that happened so if she until she goes here then this will occur so it's setting up a type of uh, condition and we'll learn each one of these in more detail this is really just a surfeited overview of them and how they're utilized in sentences in future courses inshallah all right assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah